Hello, welcome to Prima Fasci. Today I'm going to be showing you how Clio integrates uh, with Prima Fasci. So first of all, when you log in, you're going to notice the Clio icon here is red. That's because it's not currently synced or connected to a Clio account. So to connect it, you'll go here to the administrator panel. We're going to navigate to the Clio tab. Click on Clio Connect. Because I'm already logged in under my demo my demo account is just going to say yes let's connect so we want to connect there I'm going to close this window refresh the Prima Fasci console and now you'll see the light turned green we are connected and the next step we're going to need to take is to import the custom fields so to do that we're just going to look here now there's a number that aren't currently supported most common ones are so text line date check boxes pick lists text areas, those are all supported. And what you'll do is just click Import All. So now we're going to click over to the Custom Fields tab. We're going to match those custom fields that we just imported. So for the ones that have relevant matching material like the USCIS alien number, we definitely have that. Uh, whether the person is DAPA eligible. Actually, I don't think I created a checkbox for that. That was just for demo purposes. Uh, immigration status, we do have that. So let's click on current immigration status. Biography, no. Social security number, we do have. There we go. So we've matched some of those fields. It's going to automatically save it there. Now let's go take a look at how we import a contact into Prima Fasci from Clio. Because the account's connected, all we need to do is type in the desired client's name here. So I know we have test Amos. In Clio, we'll click there, and it brings us to the import user page. We can change any data that hasn't been entered yet. You can modify their address at this point. You can add other phone numbers. Uh, you can select the attorney who will be assigned to the case. And here's all the custom field data. So when we set those custom fields to match, it's by default going to create those here. And so, you know, if you want, you can just double check that and make sure everything matches up correctly for for what they're using. Click import, and it's going to import that contact, and here we go. So the first thing I want to show you is that those custom field information, it does populate here. Their address populates there. Uh, this Go Clio button, so we're at the contact level page. By clicking this button, it's going to bring us into Clio to that contact page for that client. Okay, It's got all their information there. Now if we go back here. We can look at subcontacts. These would be anybody that is going to be related in the case, uh, whose information you need to use to populate forms. You can create new ones there. Uh, there's cases. We can track notes, phone calls, tasks. We can upload a profile picture there. If they have any open bills in Clio, they can see those there. And if they have any cases that are open in Clio, they can. Okay, it is important right to know that when you have a contact that was created in Clio and they already have a number of cases. When you go to import that contact, they are those cases are going to show up here, right? So they show right here. So we could actually import both of the, those cases. If we figure they're open, they're active, we might be using them. You can import those both when you import that contact, okay? And so those cases will show right there. Now, if we go back to this test client, we didn't have any so we would import them from here. We already imported those, you can see. So for example, we go back to Amos. If we have a matter that's created after they were imported into Clio, this would be useful. So we'll create a new one here. I'm just going to call it Test Matter. We'll save that. Go back here. We can refresh the Clio Sync page. Now it's going to show up. It's not been imported yet. So you can assign it to the appropriate attorney click import case. Now it's going to import and it will show up here once we refresh it. There we go. Imported from Clio. What they can do then is they can take advantage of our case flows, our checklists, our list of forms, all these other features that we have for immigration cases. Um, and what they would do is once they import this case in order to get the flow and the checklist items and the forms, they would edit the case type. 
and then we could select any of our predefined case types or one that they've created click change and there we go so now we've got all the case flow items for that particular type of case they can check those off as they go through the different steps in the case they can print that they can give it to their client it's a quick way for them to know where the case is at uh, checklist of items that their clients gonna need to bring for the case so they can verify what's been provided and what hasn't yet they can email that to the client simply by clicking here so I already put a email in for this client checklist that we just sent to our client so if they lose it they can quickly recover it that way uh, for the forms it's going to populate those forms with the main contacts information so in this instance test Amos's information is going to populate this G28 form and there's going to be some information that you have to include manually but most of the relevant information like name go to the next page address phone number alien number all of the stuff that you're going to put into that contact information will auto populate in here for him downloading the form you can do from here by clicking this download button or you can download it from this screen right here now what we also included for people who sync with Clio is they can save it to their Clio drive just by clicking there so that's uploading now if we go back to actually let's do it this way let's go Clio so this go Clio button exists at the case level as well as at the contact level so we can go here go to our documents and we will see prima facie forms open that and there's the PDF that they created you can open that and view it here. Of course, they may want to take a quick view at it from within Prima Fasci. We can download it here quickly. All right, so USCIS receipt number tool. Every time you file a petition with immigration, it's they're going to give you a receipt number, and then you can track the status of the case with that problem is it's a little bit cumbersome going to USCIS.gov they're constantly changing the website so right now they put it here click that every time you have to enter uh, let's see if I got my memory here maybe this is one yep so you have to manually enter that number what we've done is we created a module a feature where you'll create this. You'll select the form that you filed. So as the receipt comes in the mail, your secretary or the attorney would input this information here. Click Add. And then anytime they're looking at the case or anytime they want to know what's going on in the case, they can come to their case, click Update Status, and it's going to show you the most recent information. You can also click here if you want to see that information in USCIS. It saves a few clicks. So now let's talk about the ideal workflow. Ideally, your clients will create their contacts in Clio, and then they will import them into Prima Fasci via the search box here. That's going to help maintain the integrity of the data and make sure that there's no backwards updating where an error multi-populates or something. So they import into Prima Fasci, and from Prima Fasci, whether they create the case in Clio or in Prima Fasci, it doesn't matter because when you're synced with Clio, whenever you create a case in Prima Fasci, let's just go create another uh, I-90 case. Right? Whenever you create a case in Prima Fasci and you're synced with Clio, it's going to force a creation of that case in Clio as well. So I created this one case in Prima Fasci. If we click on uh, let's click on the contact level just so we'll go to quickly go to Clio. It's going to show you now under matters. Look, there's this I-90 green card renewal from Prima Fasci. So we know that that case was created in both places. So if you're creating tasks and they're managing other tasks from Clio, it's going to work great. If they're managing their notes from either side, it's going to work great. Because notes at the contact level will populate both ways no matter where you create them. So created in Prima. Prima. Let's add that note. And let's go Clio. 
and we'll go to notes and there's the note that I just created in Prima Fashion. Let's create a note here. Probably put a date in there. Okay, we created a note in Clio. Let's go back to Prima. We'll refresh. There it is. Notes at the contact level sync both ways. Okay, now we also created tasks at the contact level. Those will not sync with Clio because Clio doesn't support tasks at the contact level. Simple enough. If we go into the cases, no matter where we created the case, so it doesn't matter which one we check here, both notes and tasks will sync both ways. Okay, I'll pick someone to assign it to. In order to manage tasks both ways, they're going to want to have a license for each person uh, in both systems so that those will match. Uh, okay, so we created one here. Let's click Go Clio. It's going to load that page. We'll go to Tasks, and there it is. And if we create one here, user save task there we go it's saved here we go back here and refresh one thing I didn't show and you there is that right from the home page when you log in we have what's called a priority dates tracker so for every petition where you have to wait in line for a visa they give you a priority date and every month the US Department of State publishes uh, what they call the visa bulletin which determines which petitions can go forward now based on the filing date. So these ones here for Wayne Newton, Brittany Pears, and Wayne Newton, these are all indicated here. They can go forward. Uh, every month that's something that we at Prima Fasci update when the U.S. Department of State releases the information. So for everybody who has an account, they don't have to worry about someone who filed a petition back in 1992 because when the petition is ready to be filed, it's going to show up in this list. When some final action is ready to go forward, They'll show up in that list. So as you can see, there's a lot of useful functionality when you sync Prima Fasci with Clio. All of a sudden, you do have the ability of managing immigration cases, uh, complete with all of the forms that you would need, that autofill based on the information that's, that's imported or inputted. And it's so much faster than the competition. It's so much easier to use than the competition, and it's even less expensive. So there's a really lot there's there's a lot of good selling points for it. All right. Hope you have a great day. Thanks. Bye.